Hey, this is Leo for Actualize.org, and in this video, we're going to talk about mindfulness. All right, welcome back. Let us crack into the topic of mindfulness. This is a really important topic, and I think that you should start to really think about this and develop mindfulness because it can have some powerful effects on your life. So let's crack into what, ha what mindfulness is, and I'm gonna give you some practical ways to start developing mindfulness without just theorizing about it. I'm gonna tell you actually how you can start developing it. So this is gonna be really cool, really fast, really practical. Before we get into that though, let's talk about why mindfulness is important. Why you wanna care about mindfulness is basically because it's gonna make you happy, it's gonna make you calm and peaceful, and it's gonna get you high performance in your career or whatever else that you're out there doing in your life. That is why I love mindfulness, and it can lead to some really profound realizations down the road if you keep really practicing it and doing it. But really, it's about start, stopping suffering. It's about how do you stop suffering? I think all of us have this question. All of us are looking for something more in our lives where we're, you know, we're, doing, we're doing this, we're doing that, we're doing relationships, we're doing our work, and then we're wondering, well, there's like, what, how, can I, how can I get rid of some of this pain that I'm having? And really what you're having there is you're having suffering. You're suffering in some way in different parts of your life, and you're always looking for ways to eliminate that suffering. And so mindfulness is very powerful for that. Let's talk about what mindfulness is now. Mindfulness, quite simply, is being in the moment and having an observation of yourself. So in your mind, it's as though you stepped out of yourself, stepped out of your body, stepped out of your mind, and you're just observing yourself without any sort of judgment, without any sort of criticism, without any sort of additional thought. All you're doing is observing yourself. So it's like an extra layer that you're adding, like an extra cognitive layer that you're adding into your everyday activities where you're just observing yourself. And you're looking at yourself as though you were observing a chimp in a zoo. So you know how like a, uh, a social scientist or an anthropologist or whoever studies chimps will go into a zoo and sit there and just sit near the, the chimp cage and just kind of watch the chimps do their thing. And if that scientist is trying to be objective, that scientist is trying to just sit there and not add any of his own uh, ideas to what the chimps are doing, he's just sitting there and just like recording notes just on what the chimps are doing. Oh, okay, that chimp just ran across ran across from one side of the cage to the next. Okay, then he just like writes that down. Then he sees another chimp go and hit this chimp in the head with his fist. Okay, so he just like writes that down. He doesn't judge it, he just writes it down. And he's just observing it. So it's basically like he's sitting there with a camera just like recording what the chimps are doing. That's what mindfulness is. And because we are self-conscious human beings, we have the ability to look at ourselves and to introspect. That is how you can be more mindful is that you can start to observe yourself. Notice what is happening throughout your day. And you might say, well, I already know what's, what's going on. I mean, I'm conscious. Like, I know, I know what I did yesterday. I know what I'm doing today. I know what I just did before I sat down to, to, do this to, to watch this video. So you might be saying, aren't I doing that already? And the answer is no, you're not doing it already. This is something, when you actually start doing it, you'll start to realize how much you were missing out on. One thing that is kind of a shocking revelation if you haven't really studied this stuff and you haven't really done any consciousness work through meditation or contemplation, then you're actually going to be shocked by how little consciousness you exhibit throughout your day. You're going to be shocked at how, how much of a stimulus response animal you are. And all you're doing is you're behaving like a chimp. You're walking through life and you're doing your chimp things and you're behaving like a chimp not even knowing that somebody is watching you. You're just doing it, right? You're just doing stuff. You're not aware of what you're doing. You're not really, really conscious. This is such a deep point. I'm probably gonna have to shoot a whole new video just on that one point because uh, Peter Uspensky in his book, Towards the Psychology of, uh, oh no, what is his book? The, uh, oh, The Psychology of Man's Possible Evolution. That's right. So there, he really talks about the fact that we are not conscious of what we do in our day. Most of us are not. 
And the way that you start to develop consciousness is by starting to be more mindful, starting to just notice what you're doing. Okay, what does this mean? Because I've kind of beat this horse to death. What does it mean to be noticing what you're doing? First of all, let's start off by having you be aware of the mundane little tasks that you're doing throughout your day. The next time you sit down to have some lunch or some dinner, basically any kind of food, I just want you to be aware that you're sitting down to have some food. Do it. Try it. Try that as a little test. Are you going to be able to do it? It's going to be harder than you think it is. Just sit down and remember and try to be conscious of the fact that you're, oh, okay, I'm, I'm sitting down to eat some food. Don't think about it too much. It's just kind of like an observation. Also, the next time that you walk out of your front door of your house or your apartment, or you walk back in, I want you to be aware of the fact that you are doing that. Just be aware. That's it. This is what it takes to start building a mindfulness. What you're going to notice if you start doing this is that it's actually really difficult and that you're forgetting all the time. And that you're actually not aware of what it is the hell that you're doing. A little exercise for you right now. You can pause the video and do this. What I want you to do is to actually stop, pause the video, and then think of yourself. Think of your name. Say your name. So I'll pretend like I'm doing it right now. I would turn it off and I would, I would get my, uh, my stopwatch or some sort of clock and I would try to look at that clock and while I'm doing that I'm thinking of myself. Thinking of myself. Leo. I'm thinking of Leo. 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 I am Leo. Try to just think about that. Don't say anything. Try to just think about that for 60 seconds. Just 60 seconds. And notice what happens. What you're going to notice is that you can't even do it for 60 seconds. Some thought is going to come up and it's going to distract you and your consciousness is going to wander. You're also going to notice that at that point when you're actually thinking about yourself, you're observing yourself and you're conscious. You're really self-conscious. And notice how different that is from the moment that you were before you did the exercise and the whole day that went on today or the whole day that went on yesterday. Notice how you just kind of ran through your whole day until up to this point where I actually forced you to focus your consciousness by doing this little exercise. So that will start to get you to realize that you are not as conscious as you think and that really you are asleep, you are not conscious at all. And so what you got to start to do is then start to bring awareness to things throughout your day. The other thing that I want you to really start to bring awareness to is I want to start to bring awareness to the most difficult thing to bring awareness to. And you know what that is? Negative emotions. The next time, this is the best way to build mindfulness, the next time that you have an emotional episode where you get angry at someone, you get frustrated, you want to yell at them, you get sad, you get depressed, you start to worry, you get anxious, you start to get pessimistic or down on yourself, you start to feel very lonely and sad, you start to feel overwhelmed, very stressed, Anything negative, anything emotional, especially where you tend to then do stupid things as a result, that is where you're the least conscious. What you've got to do as an exercise is next time that that's happening to you, notice it. Remember to notice it and notice it and be aware. And here's how it's going to look. Let's say some guy just cut me off. I'm on my way to work. I've got an important project and this guy just cut me off and almost bumped into me on the road. And now I'm furious. I'm like irritated. I'm not yelling at him, but I'm just kind of like, it, like it ruins my mood. Right? And I'm thinking like, God damn that, that fucking guy. Right? You're just like, you're, you're thinking that. Normally you would think all that and then you would go into a tailspin of just thought, like a cyclone of thought, this and that, and it just goes all over the place. Instead, what you do if you're trying to be mindful is you say, okay, you run that additional layer of like mental processing and you say, okay, let let this thought process run itself out, this anger, let it run itself out, but you're watching it. You're an observer. You're like a third party observer. You're that scientist watching the chimp. So pretend that you're the chimp and you're just watching yourself and just watch yourself be angry about that guy. Watch your thoughts. So I might have thoughts like, God damn it. How could that guy do that? I'm always so, I'm all, always so polite on the road. I observe proper etiquette. I always turn my signals on. This guy just cut me off like that. That was so dangerous of him. You know, what if I had my kids in the car and we actually had a crash and the car flipped over? Like it's raining now, so it's even more, double dangerous. And then I wouldn't have been able to make this meeting. So this whole thought process is going through. Watch it. Don't stop it. Let it run through. Don't judge it. 
Don't tell yourself this is bad. Don't tell yourself that it's bad to be angry. Just let it run through, but watch it. Wow, that is so powerful. If you can do that and you can start doing this consistently, this is the key to developing emotional mastery. It's the key to developing real, real self-consciousness, self-awareness, and control over your life. The more you start to do this, the more control you're going to develop, the more self-aware you're going to become, and the less things will start to bother you. Your suffering will diminish. What's going to happen is that when you take that third person perspective and you're mindful of everything that's going on in your life, then you're no longer identifying with the pain and the suffering of everything. You're no longer reacting. You're not a stimulus response animal. You can actually have something come into your life that is quote unquote painful or bad, but because you can detach yourself from it, it's not really going to affect you. And then just I hopefully, hopefully you can imagine the level of performance that that can get you in life. It takes a little bit of vision to see this, but imagine the performance you could have in your life if something bad happened to you and you did not have to react to it or suffer from it. Can you imagine what that can do for you? I mean, can you imagine if you're running your business and you lose your biggest client, but instead of getting butthurt about it and yelling at your employees and causing this big ruckus, and maybe getting depressed about the whole uh, outlook of your business, instead of that, you were completely calm and you were just able to take the proper action to go on with your business. Could you imagine the level of difference that could have? And then those things stack up, that's one event. Because after that crazy business problem, what do you do? You go home and then you've got a problem at home with your relationship. And then what do you do after that? You might go and you might go drinking to the bar and you've got a problem there. And then on the weekend, you've got some other problem. And so the stuff, it like stacks up. Your life is full of problems. Think about what you could do if those problems were dissolved. And you can dissolve them with enough mindfulness. I want you to start applying this stuff. Start really applying yourself. This is so powerful and it's going to be tricky at first because you're going to you're going to forget. You're going to forget to be mindful of the fact that you're eating a meal. You're going to forget to be mindful of the fact that you're walking out the door and you're certainly going to forget to be mindful of the fact that you're pissed off at somebody or that you're sad or that you're depressed or that you're uh, you're afraid. You're going to just forget these things. And so you're going to identify with it and that's when your life goes downhill because you suffer and your actions then reflect your suffering and Actions reflecting suffering lead to very, very, very poor results. Not to mention that you're just not, you're not calm, you're not happy, because you're suffering all the time. Why do you want that? Okay, so that is it. The last point I'm gonna make is if you really want to develop more and more mindfulness, the most practical thing you can do, besides the uh, little exercises that I gave you here, is to start meditation. Meditate for 20 minutes every day. I recommend you commit for the rest of your life to doing that, find the time, Fix your schedule so you can do that. I've got other videos that talk about meditation, give you specific techniques and tips for how to get an, a meditation practice in place. All right, so this is Leo signing off on mindfulness. Go ahead and apply this stuff. Leave your comments, please. Also, like this and share this so that other people can notice it. And really, I want your comments because I do use them as feedback to polish up my videos, polish up my, my delivery. I also just love to hear some intelligent discussion. So that always excites me and it gives me ideas for new content to shoot. So if you've got some idea, if there's some concept that you're not understanding around mindfulness, then go ahead and leave me your comments and maybe I'll shoot a new video about it next week. All right, uh, I'm gonna be signing off. Go ahead and uh, subscribe to the newsletter at actualize.org where we have exclusive videos. You can sign up right now and get an exclusive bonus with a 19 part video series for busting your limiting beliefs. And you can also win two hours of free coaching that I give away every month to, all my, to one of my subscribers. So check that out and sign up.